we in the energy industry have a new information source, an actual real-time look at what is happening down hole with instrumentation utilizing a wide-angle camera placed in front of a high-intensity light source, a dynamic, real-time, visually intuitive basis for making competent decisions. We started this development thinking that we just had the world's greatest fishing tool, but from the first time we watched a gate valve opening like this, we started to find that we could see more than we had expected. But we began by helping save the rig time, so first I'll, I'll show a few fishing examples. For instance, in this case, we've tagged the fish with the drill pipe, circulated around water to displace the mud, and ran video down the side of the drill pipe. The operator was now able to see that the tubing fish was deformed and skewed against the high side of the well bore, and this allowed the fish to be immediately retrieved with a fishing tool selected based on the video. Here we see a few perforations and another tubing fish. This is supposedly a chemical cut, but I have my doubts. Here we have some sort of wireline tool fish stuck in, stuck out of the sand there in the debris at, a, at the depth the casing string is damaged and cracked open. Knowing the size, shape, and orientation of the fish gives immediate insight into a quick solution. Here we have the top of a large downhole cavern. And down in the cavern, we find drill pipe, which had been inadvertently dropped into it. The cavern's about 80 feet wide and tall. Here we can see the even the paint stripes indicating the condition of the drill pipe. And here is the tool joint. Kind of a rare view of drill pipe down hole from the outside and sideways. And some fishing jobs are just harder than others. And they went on down to see what the bottom of the cavern looked like as well. And this is the bottom. However, fishing jobs led us to discover that you can see down at the bottom of many oil wells. So next I'll show a few production logging examples. For instance, this well is only 7% water cut at the surface. And, and we've gone through thousands and thousands of feet of nothing but blackness. We can't see through oil. But when we get close to the bottom of the tubing, this is the tailpipe, the packer bore, the jewelry, the R nipples, etc. We find the continuous component of the mixture is water, and we can see. When we break out into the 9 and 5 eighths casing there, there went a case and collar. Most of the volumetric capacity is water. And since we are centralized in the lower portion of the well bore, we can see what is going on. There was lightweight oil. Here is normal black oil. These holes are actually not perforations, they're the hydraulic setting ports of a hydraulic setting packer. They're not supposed to do that, they're leaking. Fortunately, they're leaking oil, but they are leaking. Of course, that's not our packer, I wouldn't be showing it. Here we have a still picture. Notice what happens when you add full motion video to the image. You can see the flow information. You can tell from the bubble movement that these three holes are producing a lot of water. Also, enlarged holes are typical of high flow rate water entry. Here we are already below all the oil and gas production and we're looking at the portion of the well producing water. Apparently the top perforation here is uh, the perforation on the high side of the hole has been producing sand and water fast enough to eat out this large gaping hole in the casing. Here we are also below the oil and gas production. Notice that some of the perforations are making the water swirl in a clockwise direction. And two inches further down, the perforation will be swirling the water in a counterclockwise direction. This is due to the difference in the perforation tunnels made when the gun was laying on the bottom of the hole. And this swirling can really confuse conventional spinner type flow meters. In fact, the normal logs did not pick this up. This is what gas entry into a water environment looks like. It's either a perforation or a casing leak. Next we have a normal production video log. You can tell the difference between the gas entry and the oil entry because the gas bubbles are more highly reflective and they, they move faster through the water than the oil bubbles because of the density, di density differences. At this point, this well is, has been shut in and is equalizing. We typically make the first pass in the well with the well shut in or at very low flow rates so that we can see each and every perforation and what it is producing. Then we will open up the well to half or even full flow rates and make another pass to see the higher flow rates. Here's some of the oil in the bottom of that same well. And 
Next is that same well a few, few minutes later as they've brought it online. And here's that same top perforation producing gas. The hydrocarbon flow is filling up about one third of the volumetric capacity of the borehole here, but we can still see what's going on. Down here is a good view of oil production. This is a fairly prolific well. And we found that almost all wells, the oil and gas is on the high side of the hole. There is enough deviation in almost all wells to uh, keep it out of our way. We do have color cameras now on our units. And here is a perforation in a gas well spraying in wet gas. There are engineering trade-offs in using color, so we usually use black and white. This customer's well kept loading up with water and dying, so he used downhole video to find the five specific perforations that were producing water. And then he found, then he used that information to uh, set straddle packers and to squeeze off the water. Here we have a sand control screen, somewhat corroded but that's a sand control screen with gas bubbling up like an aquarium. This well is inclined about 45 or 50 degrees. You can tell by the path of the bubbles. And a few feet below that, we have the oil and condensate bubbling in. This is lightweight oil, such as is found in some parts of the world, and that is the reason it's not black. And below the oil is mostly water. And here's a perfect screen, sand control screen is what it looks like before it's corroded. This is a normal production logging run. Note the depth of each perforation and we're identifying the fluid being produced at each depth. Here's a perforation producing oil. And there's a perforation producing not, not much of anything. And there's a perforation producing both oil and gas. You can see the white bubbles intermixed with the, the black bubbles from that perforation. Usually we have either oil production or gas production, but that perforation had both. We used to think that because of em emulsions and dispersions, we wouldn't be able to see down hole. But we found that that's not the case. Here we have a, they're just opening up the well and you can see the oil coming in that big hole. This is a calcium carbonate scaled up casing. Another perforation here producing oil and water. You can tell by the way it shoots out the oil bubbles there.